What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and another video on the BMW E60 today and again you're probably wondering why I'm sitting in the passenger seat that is because of course we are joined with the BMW doctor himself and in today's video we are going to be doing a full diagnostics check on my car and we are going to be using ISTA, I'm going to be using ISTA to do so so um, exciting stuff never used it before obviously Dean's uh, very familiar with that uh, with that software and um, you seem to know what you're doing so I'll leave uh, I'll leave you to get on with that yep so the first thing is um, very shocking is that George has full codes in his modules everywhere they're all yellow, as you'll probably see here, which I'm very shocked at. And he's got seven faults and the DSC and the DME, so we're going to load them up. Now, I've just scanned his car. Well, I wasn't expecting there to be faults, to be fair, because he's had it remapped. You know, but, you know, a good car can always end up in a bad car, this stuff. Now, these faults don't, before I even open them, can relate to other things. Now, the problem with George's car is where it's been remapped, we are very limited on what we can and can't do. We can't update the modules because it will remove the remap. Some of the errors might be there because of the remap. So you might have coding errors because of the remaps done to different coding errors. And this is a question I do get asked a lot. People wanting to update their cars when they've had a remap. If you've had any kind of remap or any kind of tuning done to your car, you cannot use this software. It will wipe out your whole remap and it will take it back to standard. You can forget using this software. Even Impar, what will happen is it will show your injectors are higher tolerance than what input is meant to read. And then it will you'll make you believe that your injectors are at fault. That's because you've had a remap, so they've increased the fuel ratio. But Impar is only trying to read the normal ratio. It doesn't know you've had a remap. So it all goes for that. So we're going to load up fault codes here, which you're going to see. And as you'll see there, you've got a DDE message talk request. You've got the talk request, and you've also got the wheel speed sensor. That wheel, wheel speed sensor, I think that may be the one that I just replaced, possibly. Yeah, that could be possibly it. And if that is the case, then that will be cleared. you also got Servotronic engine timeout. Now, most of these faults can be because of a remap. I don't know if George, the guy, cleared the fault codes after. I don't know. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. you got a whole sensor for seat height adjustment, which is for the electric seat. But what we're going to do is we're not going to clear them just yet because we're going to go into the service functions now really we shouldn't be limited on what we can and can't do just because he's had a remote so as you see here it's a diesel there's a lot of different things you can do in the system here for instance resetting the injectors if they're running rough bleeding the fuel line the adjustment functions adaptions as you'll see here reset variant swell flap actuator quality adaption electric fuel pump EGR valve, there's a lot of different things you can do in the uh, ISTAR on this M47 engine. And this goes for the same on the adjustment functions as well for the DD and the CAS if you have to realign them. Sometimes they do come out of realignment and you will need to marry them again and that's what we call marrying them. Uh, obviously bleeding the fuel system, that's if you need to bleed it. As you know, diesel uh, runs on a lot of vacuum and you can't run it on basically air. So you need to run it on a full vacuum on these cars. Um, and you can't, if you ever run out of diesel, you'll need to bleed the whole system. That's for your diesel DPF, if you need to re, re um, do the DPF system. The EOBD readiness code is emission on balls diagnostics, the readiness code, so that'll read if your emissions are readying up, which most people delete. Rough running measurement, you guys know what that means if your car's running rough, it's the only thing on a diesel, rough running measurements. Also, run flat indicator, George does not have a run flat indicator i'm very shocked considering his car is the business edition it doesn't have a run flat indicator so this will be all your general modules and your on your body so when you look at the body you've really got to look at kgm sgm all the things that relate to the body so windows um doors bonnet anything that relates to that that side of the engine now Obviously, me and George are going to get out in a minute, and I want you guys to see we have got a voltage stabilizer hooked up as well. That's why we can leave the car, the lights on, every light in the car, nothing's going to die. The voltage is set at 14.2, nothing can happen, it just stays there. 
That's it. So George can sit in it all night with the lights on if he fancies and have no issues. These are professional stabilizers built for doing what I do. Um, and programming and coding. Obviously with George's car, we're on an exception because it's been remapped. We cannot clear that because his engine management light will come back on, which will have low down power. So we don't want to end up doing that. So what we're trying to do is try and keep everything the way it is, but get around updating the CIC because George wants the latest maps. Now, that being said, the latest maps can't be installed because as you guys know, CIC isn't an option on E60. It was put on here, but of Wink FP, CIC, you can't have the, um, it was never a thing on E60, so you need to use the E90 files to update the CIC on E60s, because they're only available on E90s. So that being said, we need to go into Wink FP. Now, I'm gonna clear these in the hope it should be fine. So as you see a relay sticking, micro power module relay on. This now, doesn't have a micro. Oh. No, the KGM, the micro power module was built into the KGM. They fixed it all into that system to stop any kind of problems with the micro power module being in the boot. Yeah. They built the whole micro power line into the KGM. Now, now clearing them fault codes, as you see, everything's gone back to green. So they've all gone green now, as you guys will see. And now that they've all gone green, it now makes his car perfect. Because there was a major fault code. As George said, as George said he um, changed the wheel speed sensor. So that's why the code was there. Now, as you see here, it's got billing instructions for George's car. Vehicle was not identical to Zero's good work exclusion for main groups, 1011. And that's because George is probably still under recall. So they're giving a goodwill gesture by the looks of it. This is why it comes up for Goodwill Jester. Goodwill Jester, I think, is for the M47. I believe that could be for the timing chain. Um, I'm not too sure because they're giving a Goodwill Gesture here. We don't know why. Maybe we can find this one out. You know that you've cleared all the codes now. Yeah. Could they not potentially come back on once the engine started? They could come back. They could always come back, but they won't cause a massive impact where you're going to have a check engine light. You're even going to notice them. These are fault codes hidden in the ECU like you saw, that you didn't even know about until you scanned it. Yeah. Now, scanning out of a regular scanner is not going to show you them fault codes. Yeah, yeah. This is why I always say to everyone, don't use a cheap scanner, because there could be certain fault codes that are hiding from a normal a generic scanner that you will never know about that can lead you to a whole cause of the problem. Yeah. Like that, for instance, when you saw KGM micropower on, now someone's got a battery drain and that's showing up, and their normal scanner ain't picking it up, that could be the whole reason why their battery drain problem. But using a normal scanner, it's not going to pick up that code. Only ISTA will pick up that code. That's why ISTA is a must for anyone with a BMW, BMW 60, BMW E90, BMW E87, BMW E39, E46, E53, E70, E65, E66. It doesn't matter what car you've got, this software is for you. If you own a BMW, this is a must-have software for the simple fact being of what it can do. Without it, you are screwed. You can't own, this software will save you hundreds. I mean, hundreds and thousands in years to come and your BMW will constantly be looked after properly for the simple fact of you having this software and being able to diagnose problems immediately when they come. I say to everyone, I scan my car once a week, once a week with this software to check my car for any kind of faults and rectify it immediately. So, now you've seen the faults that George has seen, there's nothing major there. What we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna come out of here. And I'm just gonna show you an impar quickly with George's car, what we brung up. Now, you'll probably see here that this is like a lot of cars everywhere we go. When we see the user information field, you will see here, George has a hell of a lot of modules based on him being a business edition. You'll see all his modules here. Now, none of them have been updated. The only newest one that was updated was the CAS in 2012. Now, that was updated due to a security patch to stop people nicking the cars. That's why that was the only one updated. Because it's a security patch that stops it. So, that's on the latest firmware. So, if a George, for instance, ever lost his keys and needed a keys program, I would have to downgrade that. I would have to downgrade it to make him a key via the CAS because you can't make a key with that firmware on it. 
So that's one that's already been updated. Now, as you see here, all the others have never been updated, including including the CIC, which I think is crucial for this car because CIC is still running newer cars today. And as I've explained to George, CIC, you can't update the navigation without updating it via the software first. This has to be updated to accept the dongle. Now, once this has been updated, we could change everything on this car. Now, there is a lot to it. Like I said, we can't use this to P to update George's car because it's been remapped. So we have to use WinKFP. With WinKFP, you have to use the E90 files because there is no files available for uh, E60 with CIC. That's not the case with Mr. P, but it's the case with WinKFP files. So you have to know what files to use for this car. So I therefore have to load E90 files to be able to update the CIC. This is not something we can do today. George knows the reason why. It's not something we can do. It's a massive, long, out, lot of hours put in to update that. And it's something that I would, we need to we need to come back and do because George needs the maps updated. And it's the only way you can get the maps updated. So, like I said, guys, there's not really much you can do. Like I said, I'm just showing you the basic faults. George as well, obviously, was shocked because he didn't think he had faults, but he did. He had seven. But that just shows you how well the software is. And obviously, this is why I asked George to come. Because obviously, there's always stuff hiding in people's cars. Every BMW I've come across, always has a fault code. That's why people tell me, no, no, no check engine lights. I can assure you, just because you don't have a check engine light, there's not going to be nothing wrong with your car. This software will prove you wrong 100,000 times. Everyone thinks their cars are perfect. Just because it don't have a light does not mean there's nothing wrong with the car. Take my word on that. Okay then guys, so as you have seen, we have done a full diagnostics check on my car. There was no um, major faults, uh, just a couple of little ones which have been cleared now. And uh, yeah, of course, this video has been uh, majorly down to Dean, you know. I haven't really got the, uh, the knowledge yet when it comes to coding and all that side of things. Um, but if you do want to learn more, obviously go ahead and go over to Dean's channel. I will put that in the description, the BMW Doctor. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Please give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you guys in that next video. Peace.